Here are some more recordings of the Atlanta Trinity Step. I'm concentrating on things that weren't covered in the Raleigh Step tape, and I'll be dialing a little faster this time. This stuff was recorded in January of 1979. Of course, the Raleigh Step tape didn't include calls to other number one steps because there weren't any. Here we do have a few number one steps left in January 79, and so we get to hear the extremely organic and metallic sound of getting a reorder from other number one steps. First, I'm going to call the Drake step in the East Lake Central Office. I'm dialing a vacant level. I'm dialing 372. There is no Drake 2. Ironically, this trunk to Drake, being properly balanced, hums more at this point than the trunks we got last time. And that's just because the selector on the other end is using unbalanced power, so it ought to hum at this point. Now the same thing from the Melrose step. Such a metallic organic sound on this trunk. You really have to string wires between offices and have repeaters on them that oscillate and unbalanced power to make the hums come in to create something like this. It just doesn't happen if you build a network up with software. There was a great microphonic selector noise pickup there. Let me play it again louder with the trunk noise suppressed. Wow, talk about metallic. Anyway, the Bell system was very fond of a type of private branch exchange called a 701. It was a step system that was used for businesses and government agencies. And often it would be equipped for direct inward dialing, that is where the last four digits of the phone number go directly to the extension. When one of these is homed on a number one step, you can dial right into the PBX from the outside world, and the Drake step just happens to have one, which serves the DeKalb County government. So I'm going to dial 3-7, that gets into the Drake step, and then 1 goes into the DeKalb PBX, and instead of getting that city-type ring, you'll hear a PBX ring. Having dialed 3-7, we're on the Drake incoming selector, and you do hear the signature reorder. But when we dial 1, that puts us through to the PBX, and the reorder goes away. That is one of two types of ring almost exclusively found in 701 PBXs. The two ring types have a very similar sounding busy signal, which often is talkable and has all sorts of interesting crosstalk on it. Let's call into the DeKalb County PBX one more time and get a busy, and you'll hear all sorts of crosstalk, including my saying hello and touch toning and people dialing over it.
Another way to get into a PBX from the outside is through a number 5 crossbar office using the line link pulsing arrangement. We had one of those on the Raleigh tape going into a pager system. Now here's one going into a 701 PBX. The same type of PBX as DeKalb County, but the access is different because it's going through a crossbar 5 office. I'll be dialing a 572 number. I've dialed a 5, which used to go to the downtown step because all the 5s are downtown. Unfortunately, there isn't any downtown step anymore. So 5 now goes to one of two ESS offices right next door in Peachtree Place. The ESS, in addition to handling codes 881 and 885, also acts as the tandem for the fives, as dialed from the 87 step. These trunks, as you can hear, are pretty much near dead silent. Just a little subtle distant dial pulsing. When I get to the last digit, the ESS will call the crossbar 5, MF into it, and then cut through. Then the crossbar 5 picks up the line link pulsing arrangement and starts dialing into the PBX. That goes bump to la. And here that is. Boy, all that explanation and I just got a busy signal. I'm beginning to think that maybe I'm having bad luck with phone calls. Is, is it just me, or does it seem like most of the phone calls I make don't complete? I don't know. Anyway, here's another call to that PBX. I won't talk while dialing this time. You'll notice after I dial the last digit, again, you hear that bump tla which is the ESS cut through, followed by the crossbar 5 picking up the line link pulsing arrangement. Then there's a silence while the four digits are dialed out. And then finally, to tick it goes into the PBX. Here's a call from the Trinity Step to a number one ESS that's not in the same building, but is connected by a nice wire cable trunk. It's a nice pristine analog connection in spite of the fact that the office at the other end has a processor running. This call is to the supervision test and notice the pristine ringtone, something you don't hear nowadays. Since I'm calling from a step, my hook switch can still affect the trunk going out. So if I flash, it'll tell the ESS to recycle the supervision test. It'll pick up again and then flash a few times. I had to pause there out of respect for the crosstalk. Now I'll flash. And I could do that over and over if I wanted to, but not today. When dialing from a step into a number 1 or 1A ESS, you can't wait forever. You only have about 20 seconds and then it eventually times out. Here's a tape of my doing that. I dialed 3 and from the noise you can tell I'm on a Trinity selector. Now I'll dial a 2 and... 
It's another wire trunk to another ESS. Now that sounds like some sort of interesting inter-office signaling protocol where it uses a tone to communicate from one side to another. But it's actually just an adjacent trunk that oscillates during the dial pulsing thanks to the repeaters. The ESS actually gave me 21 and a half seconds after my last digit before the reorder came on. But the timeout time for ESSs varies depending upon the situation. As we'll see in this next example, a call to a Dimension PBX via an ESS. This is a switchboard that I actually worked at. When I dial the last digit, the ESS will dial four digits into the Dimension PBX and then cut us through with a boom noise. You'll hear the trunk noise get really loud because it's a very resonant trunk in a group of resonant trunks, all of which are singing in the background. Before I finish dialing, take a listen to the background noise on this trunk. It's going to increase when we cut through. There's a whole group of oscillating trunks from the central office to the company, and after she hangs up, I'll turn up the volume so you can hear it. Good afternoon, Lanier. That was the ESS cutting us off of the PPX after 41 seconds of onhook. With the Dimension PBX, the Bell system introduced a new tone to the network. It was used within the PBX for invalid dialing sequences. On very rare occasions, you could get it from the outside, as in the following call, which goes through an ESS again. So far, between the Raleigh tape and this series, we have not heard the sound of a step-by-step -step office going to good old-fashioned centralized intercept. Part of the problem is that in Raleigh and in Atlanta we have AIS, so using the magic of editing and please don't try this at home, here's what a call to a disconnected number would have sounded like in the Trinity Step in September 1970.
Daphne, it's about your call that did not go through. The number you have dialed has probably been disconnected. However, if you were... What the? The number was ringing, my call was going through fine, and then she had to come on and start jabbering away. I don't know what's going on there. Actually, that was a disadvantage of centralized intercept. It had to ring until the big centralized recording got around to the beginning, and that gave customers the impression that their call was going through, but then a recording interrupted. However, this tape was actually recorded in 1979, and by that time there wasn't any centralized intercept. Instead, it had been replaced by AIS, the Automatic Intercept System, which tells you the number you're calling and gives you the report. It also makes a big improvement over centralized intercept in that that long ring problem doesn't happen, because the AIS can start a new announcement up any time, actually in the time it takes to say, The number you have reached... Here's the way a disconnected number was handled in the Trinity Step in 1979 for real. You'll notice, however, that something is missing from the announcement. The number you have reached is not in service. In area code 404, please check the number and dial again. The number you have reached is not in service. In area code 404. Notice how it didn't say the number I'm calling. The reason is it doesn't know. And that's because the Trinity step is just a little bit backwards compared to other number one steps in Atlanta. I'll explain why after the next call. In the meantime, here comes the op. A special operator, may I help you please? Special operator, may I help you? I'll turn up the volume here. You can hear a bunch of step noises and a power supply buzz from AIS. Then I'll call a changed number in the Trinity step and we'll see how that's handled. Special operator, the number you're calling. 8729370. Thank you. The number you have reached, 8729370, has been changed to a non published number. 8729370 has been changed to a non published number. Hey, don't blame me, it's not my fault. This was actually the number of a payphone that got changed, because they were changing all the payphones in this neighborhood from Trinity Step to the ESS next door, so it had an 88 or an 89 number instead. But you notice the operator had to ask me what number I was calling before the AIS could then give me the report on it. Special operator, what number you dial? So what's with this operator intervention anyway? Well, it's because Trinity Step does not have automatic number identification equipment. Now, most of the number one steps in Atlanta, and all of the panels and crossbar ones in New York, had a system called ANIB. Its job was to pick up the number you were calling from when you were making direct distance dialed calls, and send it forward to whatever tandem office was acting as the CAMA Center. 
CAMA is centralized automatic message accounting. Well, in step, that automatic number identification equipment is also used to tell AIS what number you're calling. But if it ain't got it, well, it ain't got it. So not only did intercept require operator intervention, regular long distance calling did as well. This is what a long distance call sounded like in January 1979. Seven seven eight one. Thank you. JT assistance, that place. Say John. The name? Do you have a John Smith there on uh, First Street? I don't have a listing for John Smith on 1st Street. I wouldn't want to ask you, uh, what, what, how many John Smiths do you have there? Uh, six. Oh, really? W what are the streets? I have Coburg and Glen Road and Millican Drive, Elgin Road and City Line and Alvick Place West. Mm, well, no, mm, no, I don't think any of those are it. No. Thank you. You're welcome. Since that was a call to directory assistance in New Brunswick, the second operator should have been there. The first operator was the indication that the Trinity step is backwards. Now here's a long distance call to a recording, but it's an amazing anachronism because here I am picking up a step line, getting an old dial tone, having to tell an operator my number for the call to go through. Then we get a recording from a modern 4E switch in Albuquerque, New Mexico. As I record this narration in the fall of 2004, the Albuquerque 4E is still in the network, so here's a bridge from the past to the present. The recording ID, 5052C, is the old AT&T format where you'd have the area code plus an identifying digit. Seven three seven seven eight one. Thank you. We're sorry, your call cannot be completed as dialed. Please check the number and dial again or ask your operator for assistance. This is a recording, five oh five two C. We're sorry, your call cannot be completed as dialed. Please check the number and dial again or ask your operator for assistance. This is a recording, 5052C. Yes, that recording was from a 4E, still existing in the early 21st century, but listen to this carrier noise. That's the sound of old-fashioned long-distance carrier through a particularly crappy early form of T1 carrier. Ooh, I managed to drop the long distance call and keep the crappy tea carrier. So let's listen. Nah, let's not. Long distance from the Trinity Step in this part of the 70s was especially annoying. In spite of the fact that there was a perfectly good long distance center located only three to five miles away, right downtown, that they could have had nice wire trunks to, they had to ship it all the way out to Conyers, Georgia, to the Rockdale office on that lousy 1973 T-carrier. It was terrible, because you couldn't connect to the long-distance network without going through that crap. 
it was so bad that once when Ben was calling in to a conference in my Trinity Step office, I could actually hear that lousy tea carrier on the line from Rockdale, even though the volume on the conference was extremely low. But hey, it came through anyway. This next example of terribly backwards DDD contains some nice sounds. We don't get such a bad tea carrier trunk when we dial 1, and it goes to a vacant code recording in one of the Pittsburgh 4A crossbar switches, a major tandem office in Pittsburgh. Due to a peculiarity of the way the recordings in the tandem worked, you can actually hear the A and I B tones of a Pittsburgh area subscriber coming in to the recording right before it starts. You'll hear 10 tones, that's key pulse, a leading zero, the phone number, and then the start tone. It's a very pretty sound, and it's the tones that the ANIB system sends down the line from the end office to the camera center. This is the same sort of tone sequence that you heard on the Hempstead conference tape when tones would spill onto it there. Again, that was the ANIB system that this Trinity step ought to have. Hello? Right before the Pittsburgh customer's number spills out, you can hear a long touch tone too. That's because you just happen to be holding it down. Your number, please. 8737781. The province of Quebec is one of my favorite vacation destinations in the early 21st century. Back in the 1970s when this recording was made, I didn't appreciate it as much. I didn't realize just what a beautiful place it was, how wonderful the people are, and how friendly they are if you but try to speak French. You don't have to speak it well. They really appreciate the effort. And when it comes to speaking French poorly, that is something I can do. On this next call to Quebec City Directory Assistants, you can see how speaking French poorly really helps people warm up to you when you go to Quebec. Seven three seven seven eight one. Thank you. Essence, pour quel endroit? Quebec. Oui. Uh, Donnez-moi le numéro de Monsieur Jacques Strap. Monsieur Jacques. S T R A P P E. Oui. Dans la ville de Québec? Oui. Vous l'avez bien S comme dans Simon, T, R, A, T, T, E? S comme Simon, oui. T comme Thomas, oui. R comme Robert, A, P, P, E. Il n'y a pas de Jacques Strap à Québec. Jacques Strap à Québec, j'ai rien. At this point, I switched to English, and well, you know what I said. I basically said something to the effect of that if there is no Jacques Strap in Québec, perhaps the men there are experiencing a bit of a support problem. Pardon? Oh boy. Pardon, monsieur? Didn't realize I hadn't grown up by '79. Hello. Oh well, hopefully pardon meant she didn't hear me. Hello. Hello, monsieur.
Now that she has disconnected after giving me an undeserved amount of patience, we can now hear the Rockdale TSPS, which handles the camera function, disconnecting us from the long distance connection. And here we are on that pretty good T carrier trunk to Rockdale TSPS, from which we'll have to hang up. Well, now to make up for that, I'll try to be kind to two operators by saving them some work. Normally, if you wanted to get the rate for a long-distance call, you would have to dial zero and give the operator all the information, she would have to key it all in herself, to then call the rate quote system. The rate quote system was a centralized device which Southern Bell used, which would actually speak the rate step information, and then the operator would have to look that up to find out the rate. To save her all that trouble, I'm going to take advantage of one of the nice things about being served by a step. To access the rate quote system, the operators used the pseudo country code 114. They would actually dial 011 followed by 114, then your prefix followed by the area code and prefix that you intended to call. That would set up a call to the rate quote system, which would then announce what was called the rate step, and that would indicate what set of rates, depending on the time and type of call, applied. Now because my telephone service is served out of a step-by-step -step office, and step here means step-by-step, -step, it doesn't mean rate step, I can directly dial that. From a non-step line, the country code 114 would be invalid and would not go through. But because a step line sends zero directly into the TSPS, there's nothing to block that from happening. So you can just dial it, and all the operator's got to do is come on the line for a second to take my number. So here's a rate step dialed in the operator time-saving way. Eight seven three seven seven eight one. Thank you. Eight seven rate step eight seven. Now that, including the tones, is what you would hear if you had the operator do it. But since I dialed it myself, the operator didn't even have to be on the line. TSPS will now time out, and this trunk goes back to dial tone. Another thing the operators had to use the rate quote system for was to find out whether coin phones existed in a particular exchange and also to find out the routing code for reaching the inward operator in case of needing to get assistance with calling that exchange. So again, we're going to be hearing the same thing we would hear if we were placing a call with the operator on the line, except because I'm dialing the RQS directly, all the operator will have to do is come on the line briefly to take my number and the rest of the work she doesn't have to do. In 1979, when these recordings were made, the coin check and routing inquiry was accomplished by the operator dialing 011114, and then the area code and prefix you wanted to check for. So rather than having her do it, I'm going to do it. Check nine six one five zero oh, three six. That meant that there are coin phones in the nine thousand group, and that if you need the inward operator, you do it through six one five zero oh, three six one two one. And elsewhere in my tape collection, there are many tapes of operators using the RQS with me on the line. Hopefully, I'll eventually get those on here as I go through many more of the tapes of phone trips to various places in the South. Well, that's it for this segment.